share in the mission moment and uh, hear a presentation by Pete, who's one of the members of this Liberia team that has been doing a lot of good work among the people of Liberia. So, thank you. Whether you all realize it or not, many of us in this congregation do, but Liberia is in our neighborhood. We have, for quite a while, given the right hand of Christian love across the Atlantic to our brethren in Liberia. They have been here visiting with us three times as recently as November. We have been there twice, sharing our love and helping them in their, in their service. And we have been, for over 10 years, providing scholarship money. This is a picture which I won't get into all the details of, but I do have in the, in the fellowship hall, which shows you the compound at St. Matthew's before we actually started working and we have made a fairly significant change to this facility. <laughs> this is the schoolyard before it got freshened up, you know, after our visits. And this is where the students assemble every morning to, with their opening uh, uh, service. There's about 900 students in the church right, in, right now. This gives you a sign for what the schoolyard looked like after 20 years of civil war. This is a concrete sign and was covered up with political and other kinds of posters, uh, and that's why it's uh, in very bad state of repair, visually. So when we started, all the time we have been providing scholarship money, but early on they needed some patching in their roof, and so we provided sheet metal for roofs. It's also a country that has no electric power, and so the school had no electric power, so we were fortunate and able to provide them with a generator. After they realized that we were serious about our, they said, we need some additional classrooms. So we held a concert here, raised $10,000, and built this classroom, four classes and office space. This is our first VIM team, 2012. You can recognize some of those people. What we did was that after we built this classroom, they came back to us and said, we really need a clinic. There's no real medical facilities in this area. It's fairly large, even though it's right next to Monrovia. And so we said, uh, I'm not sure how we're gonna fund it. Anyway, a friend in the church gave us a grant for a significant amount of money, and we sent that money to Liberia, and it, we started with this foundation. <clears throat> so the first VIM team moved a lot of cinder blocks, mixed a lot of mortar, and we helped the Masons raise this, the walls on this uh, facility up to the height of the, above the windows. You're not the same side. While we were there also, <clears throat> fortunately, we had time to spend with the, with the young people. This is one of the things that we did. Uh, ran a vacation Bible school for, for these folks. But we also ran seminars for the senior high. We, <clears throat> we had training sessions for the teachers. It was quite an active week on our part. You'll notice here that the, there are two kinds of uniforms. The white shirts are the senior highs and the yellow shirts are in fact the elementary school children. And one thing you'll notice if you go, when you go, that they are happy, and they are clean, and they are overjoyed to see you. It's hard to believe that these little guys come from houses that have no electric power, no running water, many of them with dirt floors. 
the inside of the school was a little bit grungy, so we had some funds. So we bought, you know, painting supplies and the like, and we actually painted two of the 20 classrooms, but in the process educated the, the students as to how this could occur. Those are students behind Ginger. And w between our two trips, they went ahead and painted all of the classrooms. We also noticed that their hymnals in the church were in very, very sad state. So we had a, a process here and we collected 450 hymnals and we shipped them off in barrels so they could change theirs out at St. Matthew's, but they also could share them with a lot of other churches. This is the second VIM team, went there in 2014. You can see behind, their, on the right-hand side, you can see the exterior of the clinic. It is actually structurally completed at this point. So in the, between the two uh, trips, with our funds, they went ahead and completed the walls, put on a roof. But most important and most striking is the sign. We started painting this in, uh, in 2012. They completed it. It now is like a beacon because this is right on the main road. You can see the main road right there on the right-hand side of that picture. It's like a beacon in that community, St. Matthew's United Methodist School. In addition, uh, they were able to, during this period of time, paint the exterior of all the school buildings. And they put a, a, a significant addition uh, uh, concrete on the schoolyard. And so the place actually looks fantastic. This is the way the clinic looks now. When we were there last, we were still in the part, process of stuccoing the outside, uh, putting uh, mud on the walls on the inside, putting door frames up, and things of this nature. Then they had to wait, because this is the, the chap who was, uh, had the money for the windows had to run out of the country. So they had to wait until they got the windows in and the doors uh, before they actually went and finished it. But this is the way it looks right now, all painted doors, windows, and the like, all waiting for approval to operate as a clinic, which they're hoping will happen sometime in the next month or so. But after we left, shortly, you know, probably a month after we left, the Ebola came across the border. And this was an actual tragedy. We all read about it, but those of us that are familiar with Liberia have no, have a better sense of this. And so this was a pocket community, and the principal is very attuned to the needs of the, of the area. So he asked us for funds, the church, asked us for funds where we could buy buckets and Clorox so the people could, could uh, proceed with some sanitation. They did. So you have here two students who were trained on what to do with the supplies that no Ebola came up in this community. When they opened up the school eight months later on, all the students needed to be inspected. So you see here a picture of them uh, going through uh, a testing at the ent entry before they were allowed to come into the school. There they are. All the buildings shiny, the new pavement, new clean outfits, and the morning waiting for school. It's all about the kids. So any of us that have been there know that. They're, they're lovely to be with. They're lovely to talk to. They're lovely to hug. They just love you. Our money is well spent. However, we have one more, at least one more task. When Jerry was here, that's the principal, in November he asked for funds for two additional school buildings, uh, rooms, uh, to, for some special education that was required. They are presently under construction, as you can see here. So upon those, their completion, we then have some decisions to make. I hope that we will continue with the, with the scholarship money, because that's very, very important. 
But in addition to that, the clinic will be opening, and we need, as a church, need to decide what kind of a role we want to play in the clinic. But in addition to that, you all have some choices to make. You need to decide whether you're going to go with me in 2017 to Liberia. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>